talk about it. For more than 30 years, Dr. Elizabeth Loftus of the University of Washington has studied the accuracy of eyewitness memory. I thought I would take a look at, from a scientific point of view, the questioning of witnesses to crimes and accidents and other sorts of events that bring these witnesses into courtrooms. And so I began to design some studies where we showed people films of traffic accidents or uh, sometimes a series of slides depicting a crime or an accident. Uh, and then we asked people questions in different ways. And one of the things that I found in one of the earliest studies is that by just changing a word or two in your question, uh, you could significantly affect the answer somebody gave you. So if you ask people who have seen an accident a question like, how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other? They'll give you, on the average, a higher estimate of speed than if you ask the same question with, with the verb hit, how fast were the cars going when they hit each other. And that was one of the earliest studies I did, showing that the way you question people about uh, experiences that they've had or about events that they've witnessed can affect the accuracy of their reporting. Our minds are not videotape recorders. The ability to recall events, especially traumatic events, is sometimes clouded and subject to distortion. This is due in part to what is generally known as the misinformation effect. Uh, before we were even calling this the misinformation effect, I was doing studies in which I would show people, we'll call them witnesses, uh, an, an event, maybe a simulated crime or accident. I would ask them some leading questions. So maybe they saw a scene with a stop sign and I would suggest to them in a leading question that it was a yield sign. And subsequently, people, many people would later on tell me, I saw a yield sign. In other words, they adopted the misinformation and they claimed it for their own memory. Well, then we began to see that not only could leading questions produce this kind of deficit in memory, but you could have uh, the witness talk to another witness and that second witness would casually mention the yield sign or some erroneous piece of information. And the original witness would then sometimes adopt the new information and, and the memory would be distorted as a result of it. Dr. Gary Wells of Iowa State University was part of a national panel that wrote guidelines for dealing with eyewitnesses. He has studied cases where DNA evidence has overturned convictions, convictions that were based on eyewitness testimony. Most people think about DNA in terms of its incriminating properties, the, the way in which it can prove that uh, somebody committed a crime. But the interesting thing about DNA is its exonerating properties, how it can prove that someone didn't commit a crime. And <clears throat> so there were all kinds of people who were convicted prior to uh, 1990 or so uh, who DNA has now uh, freed from prison uh, by coming back and proving that they did not do it. What's interesting about those cases from uh, our point of view is that in over 80% of those exonerations, uh, the principal evidence that led to these people to be uh, convicted of a crime they did not commit is, was mistaken eyewitness identification. 